soul. Oh, as you prove it, if the yoke yoke you yug, that we must rise as a yoke, that purifies the pulse, the adversary that plagues the soul. Those who do not yoke, we will fall to the flaming pits of the light that angels from the sky. Yeah, the same working, huh? And all Kara, VHS horror, f found footage horror, various of chlamydia, is still chlamydia, and if you've interacted with the video-centric part of the web in the past five years, that's right, baby, you're carrying an STI! <coughs> <coughs> on, a, on a totally unrelated note, I feel like I'm about to catch a cold given to me by a koala for the next 15 to 20 minutes, but... <coughs> Anyway, moving on. Analog horror is an all-encompassing phrase primarily relating to online videos that imitate the trademark imperfections of worn analog tape recordings, most commonly taken on the guise of home video, found footage, and the kinds of formal mass media that was produced from the mid to late 20th century, with the entire gimmick revolving around transforming that into something evil and unholy, all the while attempting to be whatever this cool word I found online is. And just like most trends, over time you begin to notice patterns, predictable twists, and done to death trademarks of the genre that become so easy to replicate it's kind of ridiculous. I do, no, look, I'm doing it right now. And you can say literally anything in this context and it will automatically soak this somebody's khakis, for example. This video was sponsored by Oprah GX. That's your cue to go change, you heathen. Oprah GX, in addition to paying me to promote their brand, because who else is going to fund my radium addiction, also happened to be the world's first browser built for gaming. What the hey? Get out of here. That ain't possible, except it is possible, so uh, uh, please come back. It's a no-brainer. You want to surf the web in style? There's a browser with a letter E somewhere in there that can do that for you. I heard if you ask nicely, it'll also make you some on-fire breakfast. Ooh, that's dangerous. It's called Gamer Fuel, bitch. It also boasts a butt-shit metric ton of features, such as its custom animated wallpapers that run smoothly in the background of your browser. For Stark Mode, for those wanting to return to our caveman-era survival instinct cave aesthetic, it's like I'm really living in a time before Christ. A free built-in VPN that lets you control your privacy and security. I love controlling those things! A video pop-out for when you want the rats to just be a little smaller than normal. Oh my god, that's perfect, bro. And Opera GX's flow feature, allowing you to send videos and files and links between the desktop and mobile versions of the browser. Also, GX Mobile's totally got its own GX corner with a game release calendar and gaming news and free mobile games. I didn't know that was legal, holy shit. Bang those rocks together and skin a cat, boys, girls, and then be friends only with Opera GX for free today. Link in the description. But every trend has its roots. After all, nothing becomes a trend if there's nothing trendy about it, so say hello to the catalyst. This is like the carrier for a widespread pandemic was like a really cool uncle or something. Like, yeah, you spawned a pandemic, but you're pretty decent. Local 58, created by Chris Job in 2015, is often cited as the origin of the subgenre of analog horror as a whole, mainly because it is. Or, at the very least, heavily, heavily popularized the idea. Various creepy mass media based ARGs and general spooky found footage web series like the Wyoming Incident and Marble Hornets had existed for years prior, but the concept of dressing up something is still relatively untapped as the found footage genre in the context context of an ongoing web series in a mock 80s VHS getup was novel and clearly very effective, combining a unique nostalgic aesthetic with that more familiar creepy internet video vibe. What made Local 58 even more distinct though was its utilization of the medium of decrepit tape recordings, taking advantage of the wear and tear a decades old roll of tape would probably actually bear, and combining that with the type of commercially available content that it air through a typical local news broadcast in order to build a degraded, unkempt atmosphere. Run vulnerable to any and all kinds of unpredictable spooky shit. Uh, then about 50 billion people looked at that and said, me, 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 my turn! And then there was a big swarm of locusts. To say that Local 58 was influential would be dangerously underselling the situation here. It was a total no-brainer for most people. At surface level, these videos were just generic dashcam footage, an instructional slideshow, or literally just a series of scrolling text in front of stock video, all with a VHS filter slapped on top with a couple of touch-ups here and there. Except it wasn't. These videos were also actually very well crafted, but this is the World Wide Web. You think people took notes? I mean, they did, but they were the wrong ones. Horror is a tricky genre to really get right. You gotta consider elements like timing, suspension, anticipation, in addition to having a scary monster or concept or entity, because that on its own is not gonna do much for most people. And I'm the dumb bitch that covered myself in tar for a 15 second gag about three minutes ago, so let's just say I know my jump scares from my unnecessarily ear-piercing screamers. Easy horror becomes oversaturated horror. These words in this particular order I just came up with one second ago, but I feel proven themselves true time and time again. It happens with the PS1 horror 
horror trend and it's happening down in Analog Town. At least with the whole retro 5th gen console horror shtick that's been making the rounds in recent years though, I mean there's a whole lot more to consider with making a video game as opposed to just my new scary slideshow number 700,002. Like it's fine to take inspiration from anything. That's kind of how the whole having ideas thing works with most intelligent life, but there's that, and there's including the same tropes and the same ideas and the same conventions consistently remixed in the same ways over and over in practically the same scenarios each time. Like mitosis. Almost every new series I've watched pop up over the years is seemingly fairly derivative of just some other analog horror internet show featuring the same base ideas as the last, and that was probably based on whatever Look 58 established. Which is not to say that the entire genre is creatively bankrupt, there are some decently inventive cases here and there, but for the most part, and it sucks because a lot of elements now considered to be tropes were initially fairly effective at spooking the viewer at one point, like the whole instructional tape thing for example. List a thing, list another thing, list the spooky thing, throw in a censored corpse or something too and cut to stock forest footage followed by a jump scare, why not? There is a dumb amount of common analog horror staples that while may once have been decently effective inevitably become guilty of this and end up watered down and washed out to the point of folks like me feeling totally phased by most of them. Simplistic easy to produce base footage, broadcast interruptions, realistic eyes, emergency alerts, anything sleep related, random cuts, random gore, random scary text, there's nothing saying any one of these points are undoubtedly bad to include per se, but they are so so common and so overdone that at this point I can't sit through most of this shit without thinking, great, cool, where's the extinction level event at? Because with the sheer abundance of rehashed ideas, all I'm doing is sitting and waiting for the big old scary cockman who erupts from the ground and commit the arson or something. Then there's the whole trend of basing analog horror content off of pre-existing game IPs, which... That's about as much as I can say on that front. I already have trouble feeling intimidated by most default scary found footage stuff, and I'm not saying it's impossible to do so with a series based on a video game with some darker themes. But it's also the series featuring a funny crypto obsessed puppet boy that scams me out of a stick. At least with something like a spooky Sonic the Hedgehog inspired series, I. I mean, I kinda get that. Sonic.exe has been around for over a decade and still going strong, and Sonic is considered to be a bit of an edgier, cooler IP, so. There's some sense to make of the idea behind this. This one straight up features child murder though, I think it fits. FNAF VHS, the sub sub genre of a sub genre of the horror genre is an absolute centipede of a descriptor and an extension of analog horror, featuring everybody's favorite Five Guys mascot. I mean, to be fair, if you're gonna throw any video game related hats into the analog horror ring, a series that famously takes place during the 80s and 90s featuring horror elements, uh, uh, probably a decent bet. FNAF VHS sort of half existed in the year 2017, but it wasn't until mid 2019 that Squimpus McGrimpus would begin to publish the first dedicated web series that specifically aimed to combine the then emerging analog horror trend with Five Nights at Freddy's, making for a pretty sound little show. It wasn't perfect, but it did pioneer and popularize some key analog horror elements, namely throwing a sensor box over spooky shit, borrowed from Petscop, some classic Microsoft Sam text-to-speech, and the introduction of Liquify McGee. Stretchy scary faces are fairly tired these days, but back when these videos were fresh, I don't know, I remember feeling a bit freaked out, no thanks to the fact that some of these episodes were generally pretty creepy pieces of internet horror. Sound response check made me flick on the lights when the little demon child began to fade in, and that is not a joke. It certainly helps that this miniseries was the first of the FNAF VHS genre, exploring this game series like never before, and in having no real reference other than the events of the game series and confirmed influences of internet shows Local 58 and Petscop, Squimps the series was able to take full advantage of some simple yet effective scares, playing with some decently new ideas to create something relatively impactful, just like Local 58 back in 2015. And then just like Local 58, the internet suddenly morphed into a copy of machine. Oh, baby! Yeah, did you see the issue? <coughs> Again, nothing wrong with making a spooky face or suggesting gore or boxing out details for effect, but you need to know how to use these elements carefully and sparingly or the horror doesn't work. And you end up with a million different versions of the exact same ideas across a billion different series and it's kind of exhausting to watch. Especially when a good chunk of specifically Five Nights at Freddy's analog horror videos decide to include music and screaming so loud it distorts the speakers. Yeah, that's, um, that's real fun. So, I don't know, I guess it's fair to assume I'm just not that big a fan of any of this stuff really. Unfortunately, life isn't actually fair. Mm, mm, I'm out of pretzels. Alex Kister's The Mandela Catalog. Here's a piece of analog horror I actually do like. Go figure. Hug those identification documents tight, cause uh oh, those wacky shape-shifting demons are back at it again, infiltrating the planet and impersonating people, ranging from damn near perfection to black mold. 
I mean, it's black mode that had me sleeping with the lights on for three days straight, so... Uh, it's a sick series, one that features an alternate timeline involving Satan and some deranged angels, these cool metaphysical doppelgangers called alternates that you cannot kill, and the kinds of writing and presentation that's making me too afraid to actually sit through and watch this shit more than once in order to solidify my research for this video. Oh, yummy! Like, uh, sure, it features a few analog horror tropes and whatnot, but the base concept combined with some pristine pacing build-up and suspension, some super effective jump scares, and some wildly uncomfortable scenarios make for a series so freaky that I don't want to watch it. Yeah, I refuse to watch garbage, and I'm terrified of watching some actually good shit. I think I'm just universally repelled by this stuff. Like a weird flesh magnet or something. Just the idea of invisible monsters hiding in plain sight- no, hiding in the most mundane environments is horrifying to me. The concept of untouchable demons armed with psychological warfare terrorizing people anywhere at any time, converting any little sanctuaries of safety and security across the globe into a constant aura of paranoia, an ever-lingering anxiety that at any point you could be meeting your demise? Man, that is the kind of world building that is so fundamentally frightening to me, I don't even want to touch it. On a less existential note, here's another fun example of world building, Eventide Media Center featuring Webs, everything's webs now. This shit! It's a fun, novel motif that suggests a larger element of play in an overarching story between some otherwise unsettling yet isolated shorts. Concept itself ain't too spine chilling, but it's still cool. Gemini Home Entertainment's got a fascinating running storyline I do quite like, involving roots and spaghetti people and sentient plant creatures taking over America. Uh, I'd love to set fire to these things, but that'd only make me a vegetarian. And hey, here's analog archives, which sounds about as stock as the shit that comes out when I simmer a chicken, yet brings a dystopian setup to the table, heavily implied to be trapped in a mid 2000s analog reliant world, controlled by mandatory government broadcasts. Also, these cool cool red static screens flicker on sometimes that I think cause people's brains to explode if they look at them too long. Now you're dead, nice piss-soaked khakis, loser. Even Local 58 does this, with a running theme involving the word gullible being on the moon, and that's all you gotta do is look at the moon, guys. You totally won't be indoctrinated into an alien cult. Even if the actual horror elements falter in a lot of these web series, give them a spooky enough foundation, and that alone can massively emphasize what effective tricks there are. That is, of course, unless the foundation is based on the most samey looking pre-established idea conceivable by most people with eyes. If I can see through the amount of bullshit most of these videos pull, then yeah, I think these count. The Backrooms existed as a cool image on 4chan back in 2018, with a description in 2019 detailing the faint possibility of no clipping into this mysterious maze-like office space, commonly reported to emit an elegiac aura, due to the fascinatingly unsettling nature of something as mundane as a standard work environment, weirdly totally abandoned and structurally a bit strange, invoking feelings of anxiousness. Props where props are due, that's actually a really suspenseful concept, this uncanny dimly lit office building interior existing as some kind of supernatural enigma, stretching across a dizzying number of rooms for ad infinitum, no way out, cursed to ones of the buzzing, winding, pasty yellow tunnels of ugly office space till you starve, or perhaps until you come across something particularly daunting. That's all it needed! You don't need to add anything else to that. The whole point of something like that is that the less you know, the scarier it is. Fear of the unknown often acting as one of horror's strongest bag of tricks. Oh, but I'm so silly, I forgot we gotta jam that shit into an internet trend, cause scrumptious bumptious, people are gonna eat that shit up. Backrooms found footage is a sub 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 genre that's been around for only a couple years, and when it was fresh, those videos were fine. Most of them were short, sweet, surprisingly well produced, and gave us a bit more of an indicative insight into what wandering the backrooms for eternity could really be like. They're well produced because they're easy to make just like scary VHS filter videos back in 2017. You can see exactly where this is going. Throw a big old monster in there boys, that's how we'll get him. And here we are today. Now this ain't to discredit the dude who essentially caused the Backrooms VHS trend to explode back in early 2022, because all my days King Pixel's web series is a very cool interpretation. It is a tad horror focused here and there, there is a big old scary charge and chuck scuttling after the cameraman in the first episode, but otherwise it's more of a sci-fi flick, tapping into the more industrial technical elements of how the backrooms came about, rather than a focus on creepy imagery, which is cool. 
but it does kind of infinitely defeat the purpose of the source. Don't get me wrong, it visually blows most analog horror videos out the freaking water with its production value, especially considering this is a free non-profit internet show, and especially, especially considering that the kid making this thing is 16 Jesus Christ. But ultimately, Backrooms videos are just another analog horror trend, except nobody's claimed ownership of the original idea, so it is the piss yellow moist carpeted Wild West out here, my guy. Every single one of these things is practically identical to the last, exploring a floor, getting chased by a monster. This Covering the same elegiac environment over and over and over again, you know? Watching these videos really doesn't must be in an infinitely looping labyrinth, I'll give them that. I just seriously wish people would- What the fuck? I just went to get pretzels. It, oh, shit. Yeah, hi, I'm your alternate. Uh, I, I just figured I'd help you get this one out on schedule. I don't know, I'm just kind of hanging around right now. I know a little bit about all this stuff, so, uh, you know. It, oh, seriously? Cheers, cheers, mate. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, I am on break, technically. Uh, it is company policy, though. Uh, so I am gonna have to ask you to kill yourself, if that's all right. Oh, oh come on. Yeah, of course there's a catch. It's for a good cause. Oh, it's for a good cause. Yeah, okay, Sawachowski, I'm not that dumb. Come on, go, mama, please. Kill oh, look, hey. Just the once, right? Does that count? Just throwing a random monster into an established copy and pasted setting is not gonna do much for me. Like, great, I've seen the backrooms in tens of different videos. Throwing a stupid asshole in the mix that has no business being there isn't gonna squeeze as much piss out of me as you're probably hoping. I just bullied my own alternate and shot her in the head. I'd probably be metaphysical lunch meat by now if this wasn't the same red background I'd been in front of for years. Most people may have figured out how to emulate an authentic looking series of identical hallways to throw silly McSticks into credit where credit is due, but shit in a wheel, there needs to be more to it than that. And it doesn't help that the more people slurp this up, the more lower effort garbage kept kept afloat by the algorithm, which yanks the bath quality way down, making way for a whole lot of poo-poo. But hey, the internet's gonna do what the internet's gonna do, right? At least we still got bangers like Gemini Home Entertainment, taking inspiration from Local 58, but they feature original spooky plotlines about doppelgangers, except everybody's copying that now! That's right, God is dead, probably eaten by this dickhead or something. At this point, production value aside, if the necessary elements aren't there to make a horror series very frightening at all, then are you really making an analog horror. A series with horror elements doesn't have to be outright scary, but when most of these things establish themselves as following the conventions of intentionally scary fabricated tapes without doing much at all to keep things fresh, you end up with a predictable, regurgitated, cliche-ridden mess. And that is where the core problem lies, at least for me. I just so badly wish that so many of these world-ending concepts and ideas and scary scenarios were presented in a format we haven't seen over and over and over for over half a decade now. Local 58 is seven years old and the trend came about not long after. And fundamentally, I don't know, I think this trend's kind of been exhausted of what it's got to offer. But nobody's gonna listen to me, I look like I'm about to go flying down a bowling alley and knock somebody unconscious, so here's what I propose to improve the current half dumpster fire that analog horror has become. Make a scary video first, then worry about the filter. I promise it'll make things way more interesting. Unless you have this one video I found that had the tape burn up whenever the on-screen lighthouse shone towards the lens, which is actually a pretty creative use of the medium, and maybe the only time I've seen the idea of a physical analog tape actually utilized in one of these things. If what you've got looks like nothing more than a glorified PowerPoint presentation, maybe it's time to try conjuring up a more interesting take on your base footage. If you can achieve the same result from a clean MP4, then why bother? Analog horror, it's in the name. I think people tend to forget that a VHS filter can be played with a lot more to create some more interesting, creepy content. At least more than just to indicate a generic time period and act as an easy way to obstruct detail, when including that detail could be far more effective depending on the scene. Weirdly enough, this is the same issue I got with the most crappy EXE games. Rarely do those things ever actually take advantage of the idea of the medium they're attempting to emulate, unless you're Sonic PC port or something, so they end up feeling pretty uninspired and not very immersive. Something like PC port, for example, solves this by not only playing into a more realistic expectation of the kinds of errors and screens the Genesis would feature, but the kinds of things a paranormal executable could do, like manipulating notepad messages and the game window itself. Do something fun with the idea of physical tape, something you can't do with a digital video file. Speaking of, drop analog horror entirely and shift focus to an underutilized medium that isn't so exhausted of new ideas. Give me shitty 144p phone camera quality video of the weird and wacky with glitches and corruptions you'd only get recording that way. You know, I do get it though, like there is a certain novelty with analog that people like to stick to. Just as a trend as old as the average lifespan of a hedgehog, it'd be fun to watch low budget internet horror videos try their hand at something a tad refreshed, something that doesn't ram an over-reliance on jump scares and cliches down the throats of people looking for a good spook. Like it's cool if you're into this stuff and I hold no ill will towards any 
anybody who makes analog horror, it's a trend for a reason, and oftentimes as relatively well produced as you can get with something as simple as this. Most of the time. Just, you know, cater to my needs from now on and make it scary enough to be interesting, but not too scary, or I'll actually shit myself. Ugh, fine. Clearly an entire web genre handled by someone who doesn't care is in nobody's best interest. So I'm doing it myself! Get ready for my new show I call The Chlamydia Cases. Nothing existential here, just the sweet, sweet horrors of an educational video series on a sexually transmitted disease that I ran through a VCR. I fixed analog horror, guys! I did it! <coughs> 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 Oh sweet, my cold's suddenly gone, and all I did was dissect and critique analog horror for roughly 15 to 20 minutes. Those herpes patients are gonna get one hell of a movie night.